The Great White North fights back against COVID-19. Canadian universities are front and center tackling this crisis and tracing its impact on our lives. This is Universities Fight COVID-19 from Radio Western. Each episode, we tell you about COVID-19 related research and commentary coming out of Canadian universities. Today's episode is from McGill University. Shortly after Pat Smith was elected as the Hague's night mayor, he released a statement expressing his fear that the COVID-19 crisis might be the nail in the coffin for nightlife around the world. Smith, a nightlife advocate and longtime organizer of dance parties, is one of around 35 nightmares and night economy ambassadors around the world. The COVID-19 crisis has shut down bars and clubs in cities around the world. Nightlife spaces are considered non-essential services and places of easy transmission for the coronavirus. Many saw this coming. In February, for example, journalists were covering virtual music festivals being streamed in China. And in early March, symphony orchestras in Venice and opera companies in Shanghai were performing online in front of empty concert halls. While many of us enjoy streamed musical performances or live streaming DJ sets and parties, the nighttime dance club sector may not be faring well. The most important reason why? Going online will not replace alcohol sales, which are a significant source of nightclub revenues. But here's the thing. Nighttime economies have been suffering for quite some time. Starting in 2012, many cities recognized that they largely ignored their nighttime economies. Nightmares, along with club owners, citizen organizations, police and transport services, came together to highlight their contributions to employment and city tax coffers. By 2018, nightmares and city governments were being asked to preserve and protect the sector that was in serious danger of collapse. From Mexico City to Toronto, bars and clubs were dealing with urban gentrification, rising rents, condo developments, tightening noise regulations. Nightmares, for example, had to play peacemaker between bar owners demanding protection and ongoing complaints of city residents. Now, the fear is that the COVID-19 crisis will worsen a crisis of nightlife already well underway. Could things change? City governments are recognizing the contribution of nightlife to the city economy. Current laws in Toronto, London and Melbourne, for example, ensure that builders, buyers and renters of residential units adapt to the existing uses like loud music performance of buildings already in the vicinity. Another sign of hope. The nightlife sector is slowly organizing itself at local, national and international levels. Since mid-March, organizations such as Nighttime.org and Global Cities After Dark have argued for public support to freelance DJs and bar staff, publicizing online tools for music distribution and tracking developments as the life of cities changes from hour to hour. This story was adapted from the conversation article Nightlife is the Soul of Cities and Night Mayors are its keepers in this coronavirus pandemic, written by William Straw a McGill University professor of urban media studies, and Lucia Bell Epstein, a McGill University undergraduate student research assistant.